live from Fort Belvoir, Virginia. It's Situational Awareness starring Patrick the Magnificent. Are we there yet? <laughs> what does Dunn look like? <laughs> Money does our time cost? Now he's Patrick. Do we know what work we're supposed to be doing? If we had gotten Shepard into space before Gregarian, it'd be over. If we'd have beaten him, that would have been that. We wouldn't be talking about going to the moon for another 20 years. Between this and the Bay of Pigs. Does anybody want my job? That five-page memo from LBJ, pressing us to do it by 1967. <laughs> Before we get anywhere near the moon, we'll need to put thousands of man hours into space. So far, we got 15 minutes and 22 seconds. I'm serious now. Who here wants my job? Bob, can we do this? We'll need thousands of people. Special facilities, technology and material that haven't been invented yet. Yeah. Can we do it? Put a man on the moon in nine years. Yes. Absolutely. We have to. Do we know what work we're supposed to be doing and who's doing that work and why we're doing this in the first place and for what reason? And does everyone look at all of this in the same way? Wow, what a mouthful. But when you take each question individually, each seems pretty simple. Simple in concept maybe, but hard to achieve in reality. Now, what work are we supposed to be doing? Well, performance work statements, statement of work, requirements documents, but of course there's also statutes, guidance, regulations, standards, policies. These might be termed direct scope, but then there's always work to get done to get to the desired direct work, desired results, interim steps or stages, preliminary conditions to be met, the six things you need to get done in order to accomplish the seventh that the statement of work is asking for. Well, this is what we might call indirect scope. Now, the best place to lay out your scope is a work breakdown structure. It doesn't have to be complicated, but it does have to reflect a logical view of what needs to get done. And it takes time, it takes some skill, it takes effort, and it's hard to get that going when the train's already left the station in a program, right? You got to do it. Start slow to end fast. Build that WBS. But it's more than that. It's who's doing the work. Often we might call that a OBS or organizational breakdown structure, which is a fancy way of perhaps saying an organizational structure. When you have a government PMO and contractor? Well, who on the government side is the counterpart for a given contractor? Who's providing oversight to what area? What about charters? Oh yeah, that's all that busy work, right? The stuff you gotta fill out and, and make sure that it goes on the shelf. Now, if you think that a team charter is busy work, then you aren't doing it right. Hey, ever read the ConOps, Concept of Operations, Anyone make that mandatory reading for their team? 
See, a concept of operation shows the system, whatever it is, in the context of its operating environment. Moreover, it's a good idea to know what's going on now and then how whatever you are producing will change that current state. Not a bad idea to go out and visit those places too. Talk to the people that actually use those systems. It's not enough to write things out. It's important, but there also needs to be a shared understanding. Everyone who touches a requirement in any way, shape, or form needs to have a shared idea of what that requirement, that task, that piece of scope means. You ever heard of the term scope creep? Well, it's not just people wanting more and more stuff. A lot of times, it's people figuring out for the very first time what was intended in the first place. But having that eureka moment, way too late in the ballgame. So start slow to end fast. Get these questions nailed and the shared knowledge established as soon as you can. It'll pay dividends downstream.